talking about Canada and India's recent diplomatic row. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and Conservative opposition leader Erin O'Toole both made comments this week expressing concern over India's response to the demonstrators. Canada will always be there to defend the right of peaceful protest, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said last week. Prime Minister Trudeau mentioned the protests and called it a concerning situation. We're all very worried about family and friends, he said during the virtual celebration. We believe in the importance of dialogue and that's why we've reached out to multiple means directly to the Indian authorities to highlight our concerns. Prime Minister Trudeau's remarks were echoed by Conservative Party leader Erin O'Toole, who called the right to peacefully protest fundamental to democracy. On Tuesday, India's Foreign Ministry spokesperson responded to the ill-informed comments by Canadian leaders. Such comments are unwarranted, especially when pertaining to the internal affairs of a democratic country, said Indian spokesperson. It is also best that diplomatic conversations not be misrepresented for political purposes. Canada is home to a large Indian population. In 2016, the census reported close to 2 million South Asian Canadians. Indo-Canadian community is quite upset with Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's comments over Indian farmers' protest situation. The International News Channel has contacted leaders of Indo-Canadian organizations. I'm joined with a few over Skype. First, Mr. Satish Thakar from Canada India Foundation. Uh, you actually run the Canadian Indian Foundation. Uh, your organization has released a press release talking about um, so the comments made by our Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, the Indian farmers' protest. How appropriate is it, uh, do you think? Yeah, uh, thank you so very much uh, uh, for taking me on the call. Uh, so just to give you a bit of the background, so Canada India Foundation is a not-for-profit organization mm -hmm. uh, working for almost a decade and a half to promote the bilateral relation between Canada and India. Uh, we are a strong advocate of a, a deeper ties between Canada and India, uh, 360 degree, mm -hmm. which is economically, politically, socially, and culturally. And some of the uh, events recently, which, which transpired, uh, you know, some of the statements issued by uh, Canadian leadership at a different level has not bode well with India. Mm -hmm. uh, the relationship between Canada and India has been, you know, very, very uh, different levels, always uh, kind of a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. So for the last, last two years, we have been seeing a, a good upward trajectory. And uh, with the current situation going on the farmers bill in India, I think some of the statements which have been issued to, from Canadian side, uh, we can understand from the Canadian perspective because of the largest uh, diaspora uh, living in Canada. Uh, some they are there are concerns about whatever kind of a protest happening. But I think India is one of the largest democracy uh, in the world with with uh, a very very robust system of uh, uh, having all the grievances uh, being uh, addressed through through a, a democratic way. Mm -hmm. So, from that perspective, I, I think uh, it, it would be prudent that let democracy work off of its own way uh, rather than uh, creating any kind of a, a interference. So, uh, at the Canada India, India Foundation level, we issued a statement uh, uh, seeking that both the uh, political level uh, and certain things also are uh, to be discussed at the diplomatic level, right? So. Uh, we hope that at the both the level, uh, at the political level, uh, things uh, will be uh, settled uh, soon, so that uh, we see whatever the uh, growth trajectory we've been experiencing should continue. What would you recommend to Canadian politicians to do to not strain our relationships with India? Yeah. So first and foremost, I would say that they should get informed. Mm -hmm. They should educate themselves about India, uh, the overall ethos of India, and any kind of issue which is happening in India, that they need to educate themselves, right? Even in, in this farmer bill, I think they all the statement which came out, they need to inform themselves well. The reform in India on agriculture sector has been due for decades. And uh, uh, Canada has been the one one of the country which which has always been uh, 
uh, taking its stand on uh, at w at uh, wto level uh, asking india to reform and uh, reform on the ag agriculture sector so uh, i think at the political level here uh, we need to be a little more careful about it because canada and india has lot more common and where both country can gain mm -hmm. from each other and canada has more to gain so i think we have to be very careful when when we are uh, dealing with such kind of uh, matters uh, what would you say about their ethnic vote banks or pressure from their ethnic vote banks when uh, deciding what to say about this kind of situation? What would you recommend for them? Yeah, so I, I can understand the political compulsion, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. so, but those political compulsions should not be uh, outweigh the uh, kind of a uh, the country's interest. What, what is better for Canada, what is good for Canada, it, it should not outweigh. Okay, well, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Now I'm joined with Dr. Davidi, National President of Canada India Global Forum. So, Dr. Dwadi, are you seeing any links between the farmers' protests in India and Canada? Well, you know, the links are, are thanks to our Prime Minister. There really is no link in terms of the farmers protest. Uh, India is a democracy. It has a, it has a, it's a healthy democracy. The laws were passed by the government and there's a mechanism for protesting as long as it doesn't lead to anarchy. And I really don't think that it's up to us to criticize an internal matter uh, of, of India. Uh, the, the, the Prime Minister, uh, Mr. Trudeau, made these statements with the farmers they, and they back the farmers' right to protest. Certainly, they can protest peacefully, and that right is in, the, is in the Indian Constitution. So there's no issue of protests not being allowed. But you cannot have anarchy in the protests. And I think that's where the discord is. So uh, could these uh, new tensions be resolved? Hopefully, yes. I, I, think, I think one of the things we have to stop doing, in my humble opinion, not just to this, but to many issues, is, is, is stop being a ho having a holier-than-thou attitude mm -hmm. that, you know, whatever is, ro is wrong in the place, we're, gonna, we're going to complain. Yes, we can complain. Absolutely. It's our right to, to back protests. But at the same time, at the same time, in our own backyard, when, when the Mi'kmaq in lobster ports was going on, the RCMP went in pretty heavy-handedly. Uh, did, did India say or other countries say, hey, you know, that's let the lobster protest, the fishermen protest peacefully? No, it's an internal Canadian matter. The problem here is this, uh, Julia, in the long term. Mm -hmm. We have, uh, we export lentils and other grain products to India. Canada, the WTO, has been hammering India to remove the protectionist system that they have in place. These farm laws are in place to bring it a pri bring a private market system as well to make a national market instead of just provincial markets, right? I think Vijay Sapani has an excellent article in the Global Mail to that effect. Now, if India retaliates and says, you know what, uh, we're not going to take all the lentils from Saskatchewan and Manitoba that, that are our Canadian farmers are going to be hurt. India-Canada trade right now stands at about $8 billion a year. The Canada-India free trade deal has been on in negotiations for the last five, six years, if not longer. If that deal went through, that trade could triple. In a time when we, are, we, are, we need to desperately expand our foreign markets for trade because of the ongoing dispute with China, we're holding our two Michaels for, for the last two years, should we be shooting ourselves in the foot by, by making comments like this? This sort of thing plays to the domestic lobby of the Liberal Party vote bank. And instead of looking at the interests of all Canadians and opening markets, which our prime minister should be doing as a service to all Canadians, you know, he's playing to the domestic lobby vote bank. And he's done this before with the with the visit to India, and now we're we're seeing it again. It's not in favor of, of Canadians. And a prime minister is expected to lead. He's supposed to be putting the interests of Canadians, all Canadians, ahead of the interests of the Liberal Party. 
Well, thank you so much for your comments and your feedback. I'm joined with Mr. Raul. He's president of Hindu Forum Canada. Thank you for joining us. Um, so, um, what are your organizations concerned over Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's commentary of Indian farmers' protest? Yes, Honorable Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau spoken in support of India's protest against farmers. Do the foreign leaders have the farmers' interest in mind? What is the truth behind their unsolicited endorsement? Out of 29 states, farmers, only two states are protesting. Don't understand why only Haryana and Punjab farmers are protesting and why rest of the country's farmers are silent. Is this bill only for Punjab and Haryana? Please do not generalize it as a farmers in India. This is the same Prime Minister who went to WTO against India for supporting farmers. Such an opportunistic person. We are very quite concerned over PM Trudeau, Conservative Party of Canada and NDP leaders unnecessary remarks on farmers protesting in India. Those are India's very internal matters. They are poking into India's internal affairs for the sake of their own vote banks here in Canada. They should do such dirty politics in Canada at the cost of over 1 million Indo-Canadian voters. Okay, so uh, how could the Hindu Forum Canada help uh, create a better understanding between Canada and um, India? Hindu Forum Canada can help Canadian politicians and political parties to understand India and Hinduism in a better way. To do the Canadian politicians can avoid unwanted interference in India's internal matters. India is a great friend of Canada. We Indo-Canadians want to see thriving relations between both the countries. Okay, well, thank you for coming on and thank you for your time. Um, have a great night. Thank you. India is a thriving, noisy, and argumentative democracy. The right to assemble peacefully is enshrined in the Indian constitution as part of the fundamental right to freedom. In the present instance, the agitating farmers have every right to protest. In no state government or the federal government is curtailing that right. To protect law and order and to ensure peaceful protests that do not impinge on the rights of other citizens, certain reasonable requests have been made to the protesters, like gathering only in designated spaces. A place in Delhi have also been designated to protesters to gather in. The government has created facilities for their comfort and designated spots. Facilities such as medical camps, COVID-19 inquiry camp, food kitchens, water stations, toilet, and more have been put in place. Weatherproof tents have been set up for the comfort of the protesters. There are elements within the protesters who are using these protests to support separatist movements such as Khalistan and Kashmir. The Prime Minister and senior ministers from the Canadian government and other leaders have spoken on the issue given their compulsions and their domestic politics. These comments have encouraged gatherings of extremist elements in front of Indian High Commission and consulates in Canada that raise issues of safety and security.